Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I hope you're all fine. My name is Amina Hassan. I am your instructor for the course of English Comprehension and Composition. I have been working in ComSats for almost a year now. Uh, I joined in um, May 2011. I did my Masters in English Language and Literature from Foundation University. Uh, then I did my Bachelors of Education and also Diploma in Teaching of English as a Foreign Language from Alam Iqbal Open University. The course of English Comprehension and Composition is a very um, integrated and um, interactive course in itself. It is mainly divided into two uh, components. One is uh, reading comprehension and grammar and the other one is composition, that is writing skills. These two components are considered to be very important in uh, English language acquisition, English language teaching, in, uh, particularly in the scenario of Pakistani English language teaching. So uh, we are going to start off with reading comprehension. This uh, segment is uh, intended to enhance and improve your reading skills, uh, English reading skills. We'll be going through many different comprehension passages. You will be reading those passages. There will be questions attached to those passages. And you will uh, answer those questions after reading the passages carefully. But before that, uh, you need to be introduced to um, the reading comprehension segment. Why reading is important? Why uh, do we need to read uh, and comprehend the text we are given? Why is it important to focus on various different parts of that uh, particular text and how to understand it fully and in the end be able to answer the questions that are attached to that uh, passage. So first of all we're going to uh, talk about the skill of reading comprehension how to strengthen your reading comprehension skill. These are um, some important um, skills that you can uh, use, you can improve uh, to uh, help you, yourself read better, uh, understand the text better and then answer the questions better. Now it's not necessary to uh, follow all these skills together. You can just pick one or two or three or four according to your own skills, according to your efficiency in reading and apply uh, them to your reading skills so that they can be further improved. The first one is analyze the time and place in which you are reading. This is very important. Sometimes uh, there are physical um, changes that are going on around you and uh, they, uh, they impact, they have a very important impact on your uh, reading and uh, understanding of the passage. For, a, for example, it's mental fatigue. You're already fatigued, you, you're already tired, you have gone through a very long uh, working day and then you come across a passage that you have to read and uh, do something with it. It can be anything. It can be filling a form, it can be reading uh, a text to help somebody understand what it's about. It can be any passage or you can you can even have to read um, a new newspaper article when you get back home in the evening or even in the morning although you are very fatigued and sometimes there are distractions or interruptions sometimes there are a lot of noise around you so you cannot concentrate on what you are reading so you you have to be very careful about the time and place in which you are reading if you have a room that is uh, um, that is separately made for reading for example we have uh, places inside libraries where there is no uh, dis distraction and interruption at all and you can fully concentrate on what you are reading so that uh, that kind of place uh, your own uh, your own classroom environment is supposed to be um, experimentally made that way that there is no noise, there is uh, no distraction, no interruptions so that your students can concentrate on uh, uh, the reading passage that you have given them. And uh, there can be individual um, interruptions or distractions as well. Sometimes there are students who are already uh, preoccupied with something, they, they have some problem at home and they, they cannot concentrate on what they are reading. So you, you have to keep that in mind when you are given a passage to read, especially for the comprehensive purposes uh, for an exam or for a classroom activity so similarly when you will be given a passage you have to be very careful that there are no noises around you 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 can fully concentrate on the passage so that you can understand everything and easily answer the questions that are there the second one is rephrase each para paragraph in your own word words like your approach is uh, to make the complicated material 
divide in divide it into smaller pieces and try to understand it in pieces and then connect those pieces to make uh, a whole meaning so uh, you can do that by simply rephrasing the paragraph that is in difficult words um, although of course you'll understand the difficult words you can just simply uh, translate them into your own language and sometimes a sm uh, simpler language and un try to understand that and you can do that by expressing each and every difficult part in your own words in your own mind so that uh, the complicated portions are divided into pieces and the understanding becomes better then you can also read aloud sentences or sections that are particularly difficult sometimes reading um, um, like uh, silent reading does not help so you can read those portions that you don't understand aloud so that uh, they you can hear them as well uh, while reading them and there is double understanding uh, you will be applying these uh, skills on the reading passages that are coming up so it will be easier for you to understand so it makes complicated material easier to understand that's what we are basically aiming at and you can also reread difficult or complicated sections sometimes you can go back to the first paragraph where you believe that you did not understand what was written so you can go back and read it again there is no problem if you have time if you have been given 20 minutes to read a 500 words passage th that's a lot of time so you can spend the first 5 minutes giving it first reading and then the, you can go back for the second reading after reading the questions so that would be make it a lot easier for you to uh, answer the questions that are there so rereading is a good skill slow down your reading rate sometimes there are students who, who just uh, run around they just quickly follow the words and sentences and try to end the passage as quickly as possible as if there is a kind of a competition of reading although it's not reading basically accompanies comprehension and comprehension means understanding if your reading does not accompany understanding it does not help you understand what you're reading it's no reading at all so uh, try to slow down your reading rate there is n uh, nothing to hurry about try to focus on the difficult parts reread them a little louder so that you can hear them again and the slow reading rate would definitely impact positively on your comprehension in the end and that comprehension will lead you to doing your questions in a proper way so that you can get maximum marks out of your comprehension passage reading more slowly and carefully will provide you with the needed boost in comprehension of course your understanding will improve next is turn headings into questions now mostly it is done that uh, your reading passage is divided into paragraphs and each paragraph has a question in the end so when you uh, read the paragraph you can just uh, make a heading in your own mind and change that heading into a question so that question would apply or sometimes totally relate to a question that is accompanied uh, that is attached to the passage so you will quickly find the answer in that particular paragraph so uh, this also makes reading comprehension easier refer to these questions frequently and jot down or underline answers this is another related skill when you understand that there was a question in the list of the questions and you uh, believe that you have found the answer quickly underline that answer or jot down uh, that particular information on a piece of paper or just beside the paragraph that you are uh, reading so it would be later very easy for you to come back and um, answer that question next is write a brief outline of major points this also um, helps a lot uh, and mostly this particular skill is applied to very long passages sometimes you're given around 1500 to 2000 word passages and uh, uh, you're given of course ample time to read those and there are slightly complicated questions attached to those paragraphs so what you can do is that you can make a brief outline of the major points that you keep coming across while reading the passage and that can be on a separate piece of paper or just uh, beside uh, in the margin along with your um, reading passage this will help you see the overall organization and progression of ideas and with this you will know that in the first paragraph you read about that particular thing and when you find um, the question related to that you can come back to that paragraph and find the answer so these are very basic skills you have been doing all this since a very long time because reading comprehension is one skill that we start off right from uh, class one in Pakistan so uh, you just have to practice these skills to uh, sharpen them even more and this again is for more complicated passages now um, 
the last set is about highlighting key ideas after you've read a section go back and think about and highlight what is important if you think that a particular idea is important in that paragraph for example mostly paragraphs have their first sentence as the topic sentence so underline that you understand that by reading the topic sentence you know or you have a very clear idea what the rest of the passage will be uh, paragraph will be all about so uh, you can quickly underline that highlight that so when you come back you don't have to read the whole paragraph again you just look at the highlighted key idea and you understand what the passage or paragraph was about write notes in the margins this is also for uh, slightly complicated passages sometimes there are ideas uh, that are not related to your field you haven't read about them before uh, you can quickly jot down ideas that you have from your previous knowledge or you understand and you can just write explain or rephrase difficult or complicated ideas or sections you can do this to enhance your reading comprehension of slightly scientific or um, difficult passages that are not related to your field and the last one is determine whether you lack background knowledge mostly it happens that you're given a passage that uh, you you absolutely have no background of uh, for example you are asked to um, write about um, or read about uh, read, read a passage about um, energy conservation methods and you have no idea what they are like and um, sometimes uh, you are given a passage uh, about beetles or any other scientific idea any any animal that you you have never seen in your life you haven't read about it and um, it, there are difficult uh, concepts and ideas about that scientific uh, object or thing in uh, that passage so you have to see whether you have a uh, sufficient uh, background knowledge about it or not uh, comprehension is difficult at times and it is impossible if you lack essential information that the writer assumes you have now the writer when he or she wrote that um, article or passage did not know that it might come across people who would not have any background knowledge so you need to determine how much um, of the information or background knowledge you lack regarding that passage so um, this is about uh, strengthening your reading comprehension um now we are going to do an activity this is a reading uh, comprehension passage that uh, uh, you will read and there are 10 questions uh, attached to it um, and you will do those now this is the reading passage uh, after your first um, set of skills that we talked about uh, you can use any two three four of those skills uh, to read and understand and comprehend this particular passage it's not a very difficult one for the starters I have brought just uh, one uh, slightly simpler passage so that you get a very clear idea about how to apply those reading skills to this particular passage it is um, around this length and we have uh, 10 questions with it you will be given almost 10 minutes for this activity now we need to also um, look at how um, we divide the reading comprehension process uh, what are the stages and what is the easiest and most um, comprehensive way of approaching a passage so the first thing is that you have to read at least a passage at least three times that will give you a very good very sound understanding of what the passage is all about so the first reading is mostly for uh, understanding of the gist or the main idea of the passage sometimes there are passages that do not have headings they, that do not have topic uh, topics or titles so it is slightly difficult for uh, the reader to understand what the passage is about so they have to go through the passage um, first and then they understand um, the main idea of the passage so the first First reading aims at understanding the main idea of the passage for the second reading you go over to the questions you read the questions one by one very carefully and then come back for the second reading first stage is I repeat first stage is uh, reading the passage for main idea you you have to read it slightly quickly but um, you have to keep in mind the time that you have been given to read and understand that passage now um, second step is you go over to the questions you read the questions then come back for the second reading and that 
is where you have to hold a pen or pencil in your hand and you have to keep underlining the main points that are related to the questions read the second uh, the passage second time and see the questions uh, keep the questions in mind and find try to find the answers or if you find one you just underline that for the third reading you have to be very careful you, that is the most careful uh, stage of reading that is where you underline and determine which answer which part of the passage answers which question you have to mark that one two three four whatever the question number is and then start writing or noting down the answers of your questions so uh, this is the stage uh, these are the stages of uh, reading comprehension reading uh, stages uh, process and uh, now we will be going through this passage uh, you will read it on your own but we will do the questions the passage is titled blizzard in birmingham this passage is basically about some very drastic weather changes in birmingham uh, that is in america uh, there are two birminghams one is in england and it's a city in england and the other one is in united states of america um, so uh, here we are talking about Birmingham that is situated in uh, America there were uh, really drastic changes of weather in uh, March uh, 1993 uh, that is what the passage is about what happened um, how did the neighbors or the people living there local uh, residents um, respond to that uh, were they shocked were they happy were they excited about it and what what was the reason of uh, this particular drastic uh, weather change and um, in the end there are 10 questions uh, that are related to the passage we will answer those you will give uh, your passage a reading uh, according to the reading stages that i gave you first reading is to understand the main idea then you go over to the questions then come back for the second reading and try to underline the answers of the questions and then the third reading is the decisive stage it's the final stage where you underline all the questions uh, answers of the questions and then start uh, composing or writing them down for your exam or your activity now this activity will be uploaded on the portal as well so you can easily take uh, it from there uh, we will be doing it in the class um, I will be telling you the answers of the questions so uh, let's begin this was the first page of the passage we have the second one and uh, we'll come back to find the answers let's go move over to the questions what does accustomed mean now you saw that accustomed has been underlined in the passage sometimes it's uh, one of the questions is about answering uh, like uh, giving the meanings of the words that are underlined in the passage accustomed here is underlined now what you have to do is that you have to find the meaning of the word in context this is one skill that we're going to talk about uh, shortly but you can read the uh, sentence once or twice and you will understand what the meaning is even if you don't know the word before what does accustomed mean you have been given four choices used to aware of scared of interested in now you go back to the passage the first sentence is the turner kids were not accustomed to snow you can easily understand what the meaning can be it is option a used to turner kids the kids of the turner family were not used to snow as uh, during uh, that part of the year in birmingham in united states there was no snow before not not that drastic level of snow before number two is which is the best antonym for infrequent now i hope you all know what an antonym is antonym is the opposite of a word so you have to find an opposite of the word infrequent now we have the word infrequent underlined in the last line of the first pass, uh, paragraph birmingham was an inch or so each winter and even that was quite infrequent now you can read the first paragraph again to understand or clarify the meaning of both the words that are underlined the turner kids were not accustomed to snow the most they ever got in their southern city of birmingham was an inch or so each winter and even that was quite infrequent now you easily understand the meaning of infrequent we have four choices common long rare and surprising now infrequent will be common 
option A. Question number three is which other title would fit this passage best? Option A is 1993, option B a cold march, option C magical snow and option D no scarf for a snowman. You can go back to the passage and read the first two paragraphs. You can easily understand what the passage is about. Now that you have given it three readings, you know which um, of these options would fit the passage best. Option C is the correct one, that is magical snow. Why is it magical? Because it never happened before. It was one very um, new and unexpected event for the people of Birmingham or that particular area. Um, the kids and even adults, they, they had never seen such a big level of snow before. So it is magical snow. Number four is why might the author have described the storm as magical? Now this is also a question that would be easily answered if you have given the passage three readings. So let's go back to the passage and see why can this snow be called magical? What is the reason behind it? Uh, you can say that it was unexpected and it came from um, the Caribbean, Caribbean Sea from the Canadian Peninsula and uh, it can be called storm of the century that is why it was drastic so you can say let's read the options you'll get a very clear idea because Lily Mai believed the snow was magic Num is B is because it was such an unusual thing to happen it felt like magic C is because there was no other explanation for why the storm occurred D is because the author wanted to cast doubt on whether the storm actually took place now let's look at all the four options um, one by one and see which one fits it best and which one you believe will answer the question better. Because Lily Mai believed the snow was magic, this simply cannot be correct because just by um, having one person believe that the snow was magic, we just can't say that it was magic. We, we need to have a very uh, solid logical reason for that because it was such an unusual thing to happen it felt like magic this is closer because there was no other explanation for why the storm occurred that is also wrong because we have the explanation that it came from towards the caribbean uh, from the canadian side canada is already a very cold place in uh, the southern parts of the world and <clears throat> it was already termed as the uh, storm of the century it was not an unusual thing and we already have an explanation for why it occurred so option c a and c both are totally improbable because the author wanted to cast doubt on whether the storm actually took place option d this is something that has not been talked about in the passage at all so this is totally improbable now with these options the thing is that there are two options that are always totally incorrect so you easily understand uh, which one is correct by going through all four of them and trying to relate it to your knowledge about the passage so option b is correct because it was such an unu unusual thing to happen it felt like magic something unusual when it happens after such a long time unexpectedly mostly is termed as magic so option b is correct Question number five is, how are the children different than the adults in this passage? Option A, the kids stayed warm while the adults were very cold. Option B, the kids knew the storm was coming while the adults did not. C, the adults still had to go to work while the kids stayed home. D, the kids went out and had fun while the adult did not know what to do. Now let's look at uh, all the options separately just like we did with the previous question the kids stayed warm while the adults were very cold this is totally improbable they have not said it in the passage at all because if the kids stayed warm the adults could easily stay warm as much the kids knew the storm was coming while the adults did not this also does not have a logical reason because how is it possible that the kids would know and the adults would not know the adults still had to go to work while the kids stayed home that was not the case everybody had to work or go to school but it was different the kids went out and had fun while the adults did not know what to do so this is the probable answer most correct and close answer that is also found in the passage we are told that the kids were making sledges and they were making uh, boots for them to be able to walk on uh, the snow and they were having fun 
and the uh, adults they they were like uh, totally uh, surprised at such a huge storm uh, in such a long time so they had absolutely no idea what they were supposed to do about it what conclusions can be drawn about what the weather is usually like in Birmingham during March? Now, this is where you have to infer the answer. You have to guess the answer because it's not there. It might not be exactly there, but it can be uh, understood with the uh, help of the words or information already given in the passage. Check all that makes sense. You have to tick, tick mark all of these options that make sense that are correct there can be two or three not all of them a it is warm b it is sunny c it is windy d it does not snow now we have to go back to the passage to find the answer to this question what conclusions can be drawn about what the weather is usually like in birmingham during march it is warm sunny windy or it does not snow now the passage tells us that the weather in Birmingham usually during March was sunny and windy and you can also say that it does not snow but option D cannot be correct because it snowed in those uh, areas before but it was not as uh, huge as it was in 1993 so option B and C are correct it was sunny but it was windy as well it was cold uh, the temperatures were 70 degrees but it uh, snowed and it was slightly colder not like this so option b and c are correct question number seven is what can be said about the turner kids's ideas for playing in the snow without the unusual snow gear now this questions require this question requires your response about what do you feel about uh, the turner kids ideas about how to enjoy the snow there are four options and you have to uh, check all that makes sense any two can be correct more than one can be correct they were creative they were complicated they were effective they were misguided now two of these options are correct we go back to the passage and find the answer to this question now in the second last paragraph we find how the kids uh, enjoyed it while the adults seemed um, paralyzed with disbelief the Turner kids set about having the time of their lives Lily Mai discovered that a rope tied to a metal trash can laid made a perfect sled. Now this was uh, not exactly um, a real sled but she made a sled or created a sled by tying a rope to a metal trash can lid and that would slip on the snow and they'll sit on it and have fun. Johnny Henry, John Henry figured out that if he put his feet in plastic grocery bags before putting on his rain boots his feet stayed warm for a longer time Rachel made snow angels in every part of the yard together all the kids made a huge snowman and dressed it in dad's hat and jacket Mr. Turner didn't own a scarf now uh, we get two or three different ideas uh, by how kids um, had fun now let's go back and see the options whether they fit to those ideas or not a they were creative b they were complicated c they were effective and d they were misguided uh, option d they were misguided is totally wrong because the kids really had fun they made uh, those uh, different uh, um, changed those ideas into creations and they had fun and option b is also totally improbable they were complicated they were not they're very simple tying a rope to a trash can and changing it into a sled is not difficult option a and c seem quite right and probable they were creative the ideas were very creative nobody would think of uh, tying a rope to a sled and uh, sitting on it to have fun on snow and similarly they were also effective it's not that creativity uh, mostly sometimes turns into disaster but here it did not happen the kids uh, really had fun they made snowmen they made a sled and their creativity uh, turned out to be effective so option a and c in this question are correct moving on to question number eight this question will be 
judging your punctuation uh, understanding you have to choose any one of these options to uh, say that these two sentences can be combined in one or the other way let's read the two sentences and see which one of the options best combines those what was funny was that even the slightest bit of snow was enough to cancel school and close businesses and you have to connect this sentence with the other one no one knew how to drive in the stuff let's see option a b c d which one is the better connection option a is what was funny was that even the slightest bit of snow was enough to cancel school and close businesses comma no one knew how to drive in the stuff now uh, combining the two sentences they have skipped the full stop and put three different uh, four different punctuation marks you have to choose any one of those which you believe would be connecting the sentence in the best possible way the first one is combined with a comma the second option b is combined with a semicolon option c with a colon and option d with a dash now let's read uh, all four of those and see how it sounds and which one do you think is correct what was funny was that even the slightest bit of snow was enough to cancel school and close businesses semicolon no one knew how to drive in the stuff similarly when you read the other two you understand the uh, number uh, uh, the, the the amount of pause that you have to give between both of them and option B is correct in this one because semicolon is the best way to connect these two sentences comma is a slightly longer pause which does not suit here colon is used to start off headings after the uh, sentence that you have uh, used colon with and dashes are to start off a new thought that is slightly connected with the previous one these uh, things do, do not suit uh, the two uh, sentences that we have to connect apart from option b so option b will be correct because it is connecting the two sentences with, with the help of a semicolon moving on to our second last question what was going on outside of birmingham during this passage this sentence uh, this question also um, has a very clear answer in the passage now that you have read the passage three times you, it will be very easy for you to choose the correct option a is the reader does not find out b there was no snow anywhere else c a storm of historic proportions took place and d the entire country was dealing with snow now when you look at option a the reader does not find out is totally wrong because we do find out in the passage some information about what else was going on around Birmingham during that time so option A is not correct there was no snow anywhere else this is also incorrect because there was a lot of snow and the storm of historic proportions took place this sounds quite close let's read the op option D and then find out which one's the correct answer the entire country was dealing with snow it was not the entire country there was just southern parts of the United States that were dealing with snow so option D also is improbable option C is correct a storm of historical proportions took place now when you go back to the passage you find that they have called the storm storm of the century of course this was something really drastic this had never happened before so that is why they say that the storm of historic proportions took place and the answer to question number nine is option C moving on to our last question what is the best antonym for splendid now again antonym is the opposite of the word that you've been given to find out uh, the answer for though so the uh, the opposite of splendid would be option a is great b perfect c happy d terrible splendid is something great something something good something perfect so option a and b are totally improbable it cannot be happy when you're looking for an antonym it can be terrible of course terrible is the opposite of splendid so this is how uh, you go about it this it was just one example of a comprehension passage that will come across uh, you uh, while uh, reading uh, and trying to enhance your reading comprehension skills this was just the first activity so it was slightly easier the next ones coming up would be slightly difficult and we'll be dividing those activities into different um, uh, skills and then uh, after reading every skill we'll do one activity so that you understand very clearly what it's all about 
Okay, now the next set of skills that we're going to talk about is uh, vocabulary in context. This is quite related to reading comprehension. This is one very important skill that you need to understand because, as I told you before, while going through the passages that have a scientific background to them and you have no idea what the passage is about, you are totally blank when you come across the passage and there are very complicated and difficult uh, portions and um, ideas that you don't understand. So it's very important that you have this particular skill enhanced and improved in your reading comprehension so that you can apply it there and uh, get the meanings of the difficult words easily. So uh, the next uh, skill is titled Vocabulary in Context. Context clues are words and phrases in a sentence which help you reason out the meaning of an unfamiliar word. This is what it aims at. Sometimes you come across words in a passage that are very difficult. You have absolutely no idea what the word means. You have never heard it before. Maybe you have but you don't remember uh, the meaning or context of that word at that time. Now we will be talking about how to uh, familiarize yourself with the meaning of that word for that particular time because you've been given a limited time to read a passage and answer the questions for an exam or for an activity and you have to get good marks, you have to be graded well. So you have to quickly understand the meaning of that word. We will try to uh, understand that now. Oftentimes you can figure out the meanings of new or unfamiliar vocabulary by paying attention to the surrounding language. You can do that. This is the best thing. Uh, what you do is that you read um, the sentence or the paragraph again and again at least once, twice or thrice with the help of the surrounding language uh, or the words or phrases um, beside that particular word that is difficult, that is unfamiliar, that will help you understand the meaning of that word. We'll do this activity after this um, skill and you'll understand how you do it. Below are the types of clues, signals and examples of each clue. If you understand these uh, types of clues that you find around those words that are unfamiliar, that are difficult and you relate those with them, you can very clearly understand what the meaning of the word is. The first one is uh, type of context clue uh, is antonym or contrast clue. It is defined as phrases or words that indicate opposites as we talked about in the previous act activity. The signals for this context clue are but, in contrast, however, instead of, unlike, yet. Now these are the words that are found around that unfamiliar word that you, you do not understand. So when you find these words around uh, th there, uh, it's easier for you to um, understand the meaning of that particular word. But indicates that you uh, will be coming ac across something important. Similarly, in contrast, again has the same meaning. However, this is happening however this will happen so it, it helps you understand that something totally opposite to, to the previous one is coming up instead of again gives you an idea that you will be given an option that is different from the previous one unlike and yet so these are the clues these are the signals that you find around that unfamiliar word and uh, that would help you um, get the meaning of that word not exactly but at least understand it better an example is unlike his quiet and low key family Brad is garrulous now look at these italicized words quiet and low-key family and this word gives you an idea that the meaning of garrulous will be a totally opposite to this one will be totally opposite to this so what you do is that you read the sentence again unlike his quiet and low-key family Brad is garrulous his family is quiet and low-key that means they, they, they remain behind the scenes they are low-profile people they don't like being around people they don't maybe they don't enjoy a lot of company they don't enjoy a lot of people around them they don't want to be in gatherings and crowds so the family is like that and Brad is unlike them Brad is opposite to them so what would Brad be like garrulous means talkative a person who is very social very talkative who loves to talk who is an extrovert and uh, uh, likes to make friends so 
that is what Brad is and his family is quiet and low key. Now this is how you will be understanding um, the meanings of words that you have not heard before. Now most of you might not have heard what garrulous means but uh, you get a very clear idea with the help of this example. So this is the context clue with the help of uh, uh, contrast clues and antonyms you understand that uh, the word that you don't know the meaning of will be easier to understand by reading the surrounding language. Next one is definition or example clue. Now oftentimes it happens that uh, the sentences uh, in a passage define something that you don't know the meaning of. So it's just about finding the definition and relating it to the word that you have. So it's it, it gets easier. Phrases or words that define or explain. You have to find these words in the signals and the signals are is defined as means the term, a term in bold face or italics set off with commas. Now uh, sometimes um, the terms that don't have uh, uh, the exact uh, meaning uh, in your mind, you, you don't know what the meaning is, uh, are um, in bold face that that is they are uh, slightly bolder in language in uh, in, in, in ty typing uh, in the passage so you understand that uh, the the word is slightly unfamiliar and it is uh, set apart from the rest of the passage with the help of commas that means that it is something that is uh, not related to your background or something that you don't know about so it must be defined um, in the surrounding language. Uh, it, it is always like that, there, that there is always its definition found in the passage. Even if it's not really close by, it is there in the passage. Now look at the example. Sedentary individuals, people who are not very active, often have diminished health. Now look at this, we, we easily understand what the word sedentary means because it has been defined in here people who are not very active. Now sedentary individuals are those who, who uh, are working in surroundings where they have to sit for a long time, uh, they, they don't have to move a lot, they don't need to move a lot, they just keep sitting in front of their uh, computers or desktops and uh, maybe uh, these uh, security guards and all who have to sit all the time at one place and they don't move, uh, they have diminished health. So sedentary means inactive or a person who, whose job requirement is not to move a lot, whose job requirement is to sit in one place and work. Those people are called sedentary individuals and the definition is given right here, people who are not very active. So it is a set apart from the rest of the sentence with the help of the commas. So you easily understand that this might be relating to the word that is totally unfamiliar to you that is sedentary. Moving on to the next example, type of context clue, general knowledge. Now um, mostly there are there is a piece of information that relates to your common sense, that relates to your general uh, knowledge um, and it helps you understand the meaning of the word. Uh, the definition is the meaning is derived from the experience and background knowledge of the reader, common sense and logic. Mostly you have to apply your common sense and logic to that particular definition and meaning and you understand uh, the, the semantic background. And the signals are the information may be something basically familiar to you. It, it's, it's, it does not have uh, exactly um, uh, signals that uh, in, in the word form that will help you understand this is the problem um, but it is basically something familiar to your previous knowledge so look at the example lords is always sucking up to the boss even in front of others that psychophant just does not care what others think of her behavior now this is uh, about a lady who is uh, sucking up to the boss even in front of others now she keeps doing that and that psychophant now psychophant is the word that you have to find the meaning of now sucking up to the boss will help you understand the meaning and sucking up to the boss is um, a phrasal verb uh, that might not be in your previous knowledge that you might not have heard uh, and it is also possible that you might have heard about it in a movie or in while reading a book or anything or you you might might have heard somebody talking about it using it in their daily language so here uh, psychophant 
means something uh, negative that people don't like uh, because she keeps doing that in front of others and uh, she does not care what people think about her and she's doing that to her boss and uh, this usually happens in our scenarios as well so sucking up to the boss it means um, going for excessive praise of that person so uh, psychophant would be a flatterer who, who uh, praises somebody unnecessarily to get benefit out of them so psychophant would be a flatterer somebody who flatters the other person and lords is a lady who flatters her boss so much that um, uh, it's her habit and she does not care what people think about her now the next clue is restatement or synonym clue now previously we talked about the contrast clues that were the opposites right now we will be talking about synonyms that the similar meanings uh, are uh, sometimes uh, there uh, you are asked to um, understand the meaning of an unfamiliar word and it has uh, a similar rela a related word in that sentence and you easily find that and it helps you understand the meaning of that unfamiliar word another word or phrase with the same or a similar meaning is used in the same sentence where the unfamiliar word is placed so that you can relate both of them and understand what the unfamiliar word means in other words the signals are in other words that is also known as sometimes called or right you you use these signals if you find these signals in your sentences it is easier for you to understand that the unfamiliar word must have a familiar word in the same sentence in the same line you just have to find it look at the example the dromedary commonly called a camel stores fat in its humps it's as easy as possible dromedary is the italicized word that you need to understand the meaning of and set apart in the middle of the commas commonly called a camel now camel is another name for dromedary dromedary is another name for camel it's as simple as that so this is how you uh, get the context clues the meanings of unfamiliar words and after this to apply all these skills we are going to do an activity here we are with an exercise for guessing vocabulary in context we just talked about uh, some important context clues that will be used in this exercise there are 10 options you have to read each sentence and there will be a word that you have to find the meaning of um, with absolutely no background knowledge about it from the options given under that question now there were clues about uh, antonyms um, contrast clues definition and example clues you you can understand through general knowledge as well and synonym and restatement clues these are the four clues that you will be using in this activity learning how to guess words you don't know is an important skill nobody wants to look every word up in a dictionary that that's not possible you you have a 2000 words passage in front of you and you also have a dictionary but you just can't open up the dictionary for every word you don't understand you have to use context clues to quickly go through the passage because there is very limited time given to you to read the passage and answer the questions so uh, you just cannot go over to the dictionary all the time if you learn how to guess the unfamiliar words in sentences then you won't have to read with your dictionary open all the time so uh, that is why we are doing this exercise so that it helps you out with uh, understanding the meanings of words without using a dictionary this is an example of how you have to do the activity how to guess words in context this is one example example sentence is the snake slithered through the grass he was hunting now the underlined word is slithered and you have to find out the meaning of this word let's see how many options we have and they have given you the correct option and the explanation as well so uh, this will help you understand how you have to go about the activity that is coming up you must discover what slithered means by using logic here are your choices and the analysis option a is stopped moving option b is slept in the grass option c ate something and option d is moved or traveled now you have to see which of these options closely relates to slithered stopped moving is incorrect the sentence above says through the grass 
through means there is some movement so you simply can't say that the snake stopped moving slithered cannot have stopped moving as its meaning so option a is wrong right b slept in the grass incorrect the sentence above says he's hunting and nobody can hunt while they are sleeping in the grass right so this one is also wrong option c is ate something we are not talking about eating the sentence above says he's hunting snakes don't eat when they are hunting they eat after they hunt right so this is logical this one also is wrong option d moved or traveled now read the sentence again the snake slithered through the grass now when you read through the grass it helps us understand that there is some movement right so your option d is correct the sentence above says through the grass through means that there is movement so this is how you have to use your context clues let's move on to the activity number one read the sentences and choose the answer number one is the tigers roar could be heard in villages far away what does roar probably mean this is quite simple option a food a tiger eats option b a tiger's dream option c a tiger's ear option d a sound a tiger makes so obviously option d is correct this was your previous knowledge here you use the context clue of your previous knowledge of your gen general common sense everybody knows tigers and lions and these bigger animals hunting animals roar all the time in the jungles and forests so it was quite simple for you to understand what the correct option was next one number two the thought of eating a rat is abhorrent to most people what does abhorrent probably mean let's quickly move on to the options and then find out the meaning of abhorrent fun lively horrible repugnant delicious tasty sweet sugary the thought of eating a rat is abhorrent to most people this is very very clear that you simply cannot think of eating a rat and that is horrible and repugnant as simple as that because you you just can't say that uh, thought of eating a rat was fun and lively delicious and tasty it just can't be that okay moving on to option number three my absent-minded teacher loses his keys his book and his chalk almost every day now here again absent-minded is not a very difficult word to find out the meaning of be hateful not pay attention be intelligent not like someone not pay attention is correct because the person does not pay attention that's why they lose their keys or they, they lose their books or chalk almost every day option four is you can trust the salesman uh, at that store because they always conduct business in an above board manner now this can be a word that you might not have heard before what does above board probably mean option a honestly openly option b sneaky dishonest option c horrible repugnant option d strange unusual now let's quickly read the sentence again you can trust the salesman at that store because they always conduct business in an above board manner now the word trust helps you understand that this word must be related to something with trust right so um, you can say that the salesmen are maybe honest uh, so you can trust them easily and because they uh, and they conduct their business in an above board manner so honesty would be relating to the word above board and your option a would be correct honestly openly number five is petra has so many friends because she's a gregarious person what does gregarious probably mean now Petra has so many friends because she is a gregarious person now she has so many friends why because she is gregarious a person who has so many friends is 
gregarious so let's quickly move on to options so that you understand what context clue you will be using option a is introverted self-contained b is shy and quiet c is friendly outgoing d rude hostile of course it won't be introverted self-contained because she has so many friends any somebody who is introvert they, they they just don't want to make friends and th she's not shy and quiet at all she cannot be rude and hostile because she is so uh, she has so many friends so um, only one option is left that is closely related to gregarious that is friendly outgoing gregarious means friendly outgoing people who are very social who love to be among people who love to make friends who love to have uh, gatherings around them and uh, they are they are very friendly and social option six the lovely egret is in danger of extinction because clothing manufacturers use their long beautiful tail feathers to make ladies' hats. This long explanation gives you a very clear idea what an egret can be. What is an egret? A small child, a type of food, a sound a tiger makes and a type of bird. So uh, egret is either a bird or an animal whose uh, feathers, tail feathers are used to make ladies' hats. So it is a type of bird that is correct this again is uh, your general knowledge or the context clues uh, here uh, long beautiful tail feathers so feathers is one thing that only birds have uh, animals children and food do not have feathers moving on to number seven I can't believe it right in the middle of our conversation Peter turned around abruptly and walked out of the room what does abruptly probably mean now read the sentence again uh, the the image that comes to your mind is uh, about a person uh, two people talking and one person just quickly turns around and goes away so what can abruptly mean number a formally b slowly in no hurry c suddenly without notice d quietly in an unusual manner now abruptly of course right in the middle of the conversation they just left that is suddenly without notice option c would be correct it cannot be quietly because abruptly uh, when the person the other person noticed that right in the middle of the conversation they just left uh, it cannot be uh, quietly so option c would be correct number eight is after the harvest we had an abundant amount of apples we made apple pie apple sauce and apple juice because we had so many apples it's as simple as that there are many context clues in the sentence that help you understand what the abundant uh, word abundant means we made apple pie we made apple sauce we made apple juice because we had so many apples so many relates closely with your word abundant so it is shortage not enough very red plentiful plentiful in itself means a lot of in a huge amount option eight sorry nine when Sarah was sick her voice was almost inaudible we couldn't hear what she was trying to say clearly now when she was sick uh, her voice was inaudible we couldn't hear uh, what she was trying to say in this next sentence we couldn't hear what she was trying to say is the context clue that closely relates to the underlined word and helps you understand the meaning of that word now let's look at the options and uh, we'll see which one is correct option a very loud easy to hear b very soft hard to hear very strange uncommon v uh, d very shy introverted so inaudible would be very soft hard to hear something inaudible means that you cannot hear it properly so when she was sick she could not uh, be heard properly because the word right after the word the sentence uh, we could not hear what she was trying to say clearly helps you understand the meaning of this word the last sentence is the hill was too arduous for us to climb we had to walk our bicycles up the hill now the word arduous helps you understand that there was something wrong with climbing the hill 
with the bicycles or on the bicycles so they had to walk their bicycles they had to hold their bicycles and walk with the, them uh, on the hill so arduous with this context clues you can quite easily understand the meaning of arduous with the help of these options let's look at them option a tall sharp b fun exciting c easy not challenging d difficult steep option d is correct we understand that with the help of this context clue in the second sentence that we had to walk our bicycles uh, on the hill up the hill rather than sitting on the bicycles and going uh, climbing the hill because it was very steep and it could not be done easily so here we are at the end of this activity um, the context clues that we just uh, went through before this activity have all been used in this activity you very easily understand that if there is a, a word underlined in a passage uh, and you are asked to give the meaning of that word and you have never heard it before you can just look at and focus on the surrounding language using these four uh, context clues and uh, you can easily understand the meaning of the word at least a basic idea you can have uh, from the context clues in the surrounding language and you can choose from the options so uh, this was the activity for vocabulary in context Related to reading comprehension, there are two very important skills that need to be discussed uh, now that we are uh, through with two very important activities. Uh, there are two very important reading skills that you come across very often while doing a common day-to-day -day reading. When you're reading a newspaper, you're reading a travel brochure, you are reading um, um, uh, instruction manual for uh, how to fill, fill up a form for a visa or for admission to a university or anything uh, you are using these skills unconsciously uh, so that's uh, uh, where you use them but we here we are going to talk about them uh, theoretically uh, these are two skills closely related to each other uh, and uh, have a very minor difference that you need to understand while using these skills you know very clearly what they are but when we are talking about them theoretically uh, it's uh, the difference is very clear let's talk about that there are two reading skills the first one is skimming. Skimming is used to quickly gather the most important information or gist. Gist means main idea. You just have to uh, read the passage once or twice and understand what the passage is about. For example, the passage is about environmental pollution and there is no title. You read the passage, first paragraph gives you the definition, what is it, second one tells you about the types, third one reasons and last one uh, tells you how to eradicate so you easily understand the passages about environmental pollution how we are polluting our environment and what effects it has so that is called skimming and this is where you have to read the passage quickly you don't have to um, uh, focus on each and every word you don't have to focus on the difficult words you don't have to try to answer the questions at this stage skimming is a skill uh, where you are asked to just gather the gist of the passage passage that you are given there is one question what do you think is the main idea of the passage that's where you have to use the skill of skimming it is uh, to gather the most important information or gist or main idea run your eyes over the text noting important information run your eyes over the text that is important you don't have to focus on each and every word because uh, that will take a lot of time and you won't have a lot of time to answer that one question use skimming to quickly get up to speed on a current business situation you you have a long article of about 5000 words and uh, it is about uh, current business situation you just go through it quickly uh, reading the important lines first and last lines of the each paragraph and you quickly understand uh, the important or current business situation and there is no need to read the whole article and waste your time it's not essential to understand each word when skimming this is the the difference when you move over to the second skill we'll compare both of them and see what is the difference between both of them examples of skimming are the newspaper quickly to get general news of the day you just don't read newspaper uh, a newspaper from word number one to the last word you you simply cannot do that uh, most some people do that as well but they have a lot of times so when you don't have time you're sitting on the breakfast table you're holding the cup of tea in your hand you quickly go through um, the whole newspaper to look at the headlines and uh, understand what's going on today what has happened yesterday what is going to happen today whatever so um, 
that is where you you are practically using the skill of skimming and that you have done in your daily life um, most of the times magazines quickly to discover which articles you would like to read in more detail you go over to the contents part in the beginning and you quickly go through um, um, the contents on which page what has been given what is new what uh, what would you like to read so you pick and choose and open that page and read that particular article that is called skimming through a magazine and business and travel brochures quickly to get informed sometimes you have um, these uh, uh, tourist resort brochures that uh, it's the vacation time so you can come up and use uh, our facilities in, in a hotel or um, in a lodge or whatever so you just go through the important portions the contact information you call them up and get the details to look at the pictures and see what kind of place it would be that is called skimming the second skill is <clears throat> scanning scanning is used to find a particular piece of information this is different from skimming in the sense that in scanning you have to read carefully you have to read each paragraph carefully to find a particular piece of information for example we are talking about a passage um, on pollution you are asked to find one important cause of noise pollution and the information about noise pollution can, is contained in the third paragraph of the passage so you go over to that paragraph you read that paragraph you find that piece of information underline it and write it in the answer this is called scanning skimming is different scanning is different run your eyes over the text looking for the specific piece of information you need this is when you have read the questions when you know what the question requires you go back to the passage and read it use scanning on schedules meeting plans etc now um, you you have a schedule or agenda of uh, your uh, daily plan in your department in your office you go through that and see uh, which meeting you have to attend so uh, you look uh, for that particular meeting its time and venue and who is uh, heading the meeting and all uh, the other details so that is called scanning that is the particular piece of information that is required by you that you need at that particular time in order to find the specific details you require if you see words or phrases that you don't understand don't worry when scanning here you just need a specific information you don't have to worry about the words that you don't know about examples of scanning the what's on tv section of your newspaper you quickly move over to that page where there is what's on tv section you find the your favorite channel and want to see which movies coming uh, at what time you quickly look at that time jot it down with you and uh, you uh, realize you you know that at nine o'clock tonight you are going to watch that movie so that is the piece of information that you required so you went over to that particular in uh, part and uh, found that information this is called scanning the train airplane schedule of course when you go over to an airport and there is uh, that um, um, notice board that shows you um, uh, when a certain flight is uh, arriving and when certain are leaving so you just look at the flight that you need you you have come up uh, come uh, to uh, take a flight to um, lahore or karachi so you'll just look at that if it is delayed you will uh, know from that notice board and if it if it is on time you will know the same as well so this is where you are again using the skill of scanning to find out your flight schedule not the rest you don't have anything to, to do with the rest of the schedules you just need the information regarding your own flight because you don't want to miss it definitely a conference guide you open up that guide you you just have to attend one or two sessions you know when that sessions will be held who uh, they are being uh, held by and at what time and where so you find that information you note it down and go to that session you attend that and uh, uh, that's how the conference guide helps you scan through it and find out the required information now let's quickly revise the difference between uh, skinning skimming and scanning skimming as i told you before is used to quickly gather the most important information of the whole passage you you can if somebody asks you what the passage is about you can quickly answer that question after skimming through it just for once or twice you get the main idea of, and that's it but scanning is to find a particular piece of information now these are the two skills that we are going to um use in our coming uh, exercises and uh, 
Uh, we'll do more activities. Um, there will be some uh, that will be more complicated. And all these skills that we talked about today, along with some others that we will be discussing in the coming lectures, uh, will be applied to those activities. So um, I hope uh, you um, have totally understood today's lecture. Uh, if there is any query, any problem, you can always contact us. Um, all the activities will be uploaded to the portal. You can download them from there and do those. And if there is any question, you can ask us. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll see you in lecture number two. Thank you.